Sinatra. Hi. Yeah. The day has finally come since that original announcement trailer for Mortal Kombat 11 at the Game Awards. We have been eagerly anticipating this gameplay reveal live stream, and now that it's happened, I can safely say that it did not disappoint. There's a lot of information to unpack here, and I'm going to get right into that, but first off, let me get this straight. I'm not using a script right now. Uh, so I'm just basically giving my immediate reactions, thoughts, concerns, everything that I love, essentially, uh, about this reveal. So if I'm stumbling, if I get a little bit rambly, bear with me. My normal videos aren't like this. Uh, but yeah, let's let's just get into it. I don't need to explain myself. If you like this type of video, you know, let me know. But And if you hate it, let me know too. But anyways, first thing I noticed about Mortal Kombat 11, and the thing that I think a lot of people are going to notice, is that it is much more gory than Mortal Kombat X. And that's saying something given how gory Mortal Kombat X was. Now, personally, I felt that there was a step down when it came to the blood and guts in Mortal Kombat X compared to Mortal Kombat 9. I feel like Mortal Kombat 9, when blood appeared, it stayed. There was battle damage that was much more apparent. And I feel like the fatalities, although the Mortal Kombat X fatalities, for the most part, were, I feel, more creative and by the, uh, in a vacuum more gory. The effects that they had for Mortal Kombat 9's Blood and Gore were much better, in my opinion, and that subsequently made it a uh, more gory game. Uh, Mortal Kombat X really took it down a notch, in my opinion, in that aspect. It's not a knock on the game, because I, I love Mortal Kombat X. I mean, it's what I founded this channel upon. Um, but Mortal Kombat X, yeah, it it's a bit toned down compared to Mortal Kombat 9, and Mortal Kombat 11 has seemingly took that notch, took it up to 100, and threw it out the window. This is the goriest Mortal Kombat I can safely say I've ever seen. I mean, there are mid-game, mid-match cutscenes. Uh, cutscene is a strong word, but you know, they break up the combat a little bit, and you can see in detail the essentially torture that you're putting upon your opponents, which is an interesting and awesome touch that I like. I like how it's concise, but still enough to get the details. It doesn't really break up the flow of gameplay, and I don't really see it becoming annoying in online matches, but it does show you, like, you know, the visceral carnage, essentially, that you're creating, and I think that's an awesome innovation. I like the new, uh, the new meter system, where there's a defense meter and an attack meter. I feel like that's going to add a lot of new di dynamic aspects to gameplay, and I'm interested to see how that's going to work out. Um, I really like the fatal blow idea i think it's a step up from the x-ray and much more gory uh i think that's an awesome new thing to add it creates less drama with you know are x-rays viable are they not most people think not so x-rays were kind of useless hopefully this gives them a little bit more of a you know step up in a competitive field um that's my essential things with the blood and gore and sticking with graphics the new face scans, which we've seen from Mortal Kombat 11's announcement trailer, but now that we've seen them in actual gameplay footage, they are very reminiscent of Injustice's gameplay face scans. And I'm, um, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm not a huge fan of how the faces look. They do look amazing. They look great. They look realistic. That's not the issue. My issue is it's just not... It, it doesn't feel right seeing Mortal Kombat characters, I guess, so realistically, but I'm sure that's something I'll grow accustomed to, and I can safely say that they look better, I believe, than the Injustice 2 character models. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of how their faces look in Injustice 2. Mortal Kombat 11 seems to be a step up in that regard, and I still love the graphics. The graphics look amazing. And branching off of how amazing the graphics look, the arenas are definitely a step up from Mortal Kombat X's. Now, hopefully we get more variety than we did in Mortal Kombat X, but if one thing for certain, the game is much more colorful. Now that sounds a little bit weird, especially for a Mortal Kombat game, but I love the amount of color that these stages have. Now Mortal Kombat X, at least from my perspective, one of its issues that I had with it was it was a little bit too dark and gloomy, at least when it came to the setting. When it came to the settings that you were fighting in, uh, it was a, everything seemed a little bit grayed or darkened and a little bit muddied the colors. Compared to Mortal Kombat 9, at least, where everything was vibrant and colorful. And even though Mortal Kombat is a dark story, I feel like when I'm playing, I, I much prefer to see the brighter, uh, or if they're darker, you know, more colorful stages. Like The Pit. The Pit is an example. In Mortal Kombat X, that is a dark stage, but the lighting and the colors that they use are vibrant in it. So I think more maps like that, which we've been seeing in Mortal Kombat 11, are for the better. I'm going to go in-depth in a lot of the maps that I saw in a future video, but basically from my immediate reactions. I like the colors of the new maps. The new maps look great. Uh, hope, like I said, hopefully there's more variety. 
Uh, but they do look awesome. I'm a big fan of the stage interactables. They're much more gory, uh, going back to that. And yeah, that, that's awesome. So that's my basically my graphical standpoint and a little bit of my gameplay standpoint. Uh, game just looks amazing, and I'm really happy to see that. It's definitely a step up from Mortal Kombat X graphics-wise, which is a gargantuan step up from Mortal Kombat 9 graphics-wise. Uh, one of the big things that a lot of people, that's a major talking point for a lot of people, is definitely the customization of characters and variations. Now, as you know, in Mortal Kombat X, uh, variations, you pick a character, you take your favorite character, you got three versions of that character to choose from, each with different movesets, maybe a slightly different attire. Mortal Kombat 11 has taken that idea and beefed it up on steroids. Not only can you create your own variations, but now you can create your own attires too, which is awesome and I'm a huge fan of. It adds a whole new level of customization to the game and really allows you to make a certain character your own. That was one of the big marketing points to, to Injustice, but I don't think it's ever been to, uh, to this extent, essentially. Uh, the one thing that concerns me though is when I think of grabbing parts and customizing characters in a video game in this current day and age, it really makes me think that this might be involved with a loot box system. Now, I'd be shocked if there were loot boxes that affected gameplay, as in loot boxes give you different moves that you otherwise wouldn't have, because I feel like that would be a really an easy way to ruin a fighting game by giving people who are willing to dish out money a competitive advantage. But when it comes to the specific attire set pieces and maybe just different animations that affect the same way in gameplay, uh, that I could definitely see being a loot box thing. And that scares me. I really do not want to see loot boxes in my Mortal Kombat games. It We kind of ruined that system for me. But, you know, I'm more excited about the, uh, you know, the variation moveset factor rather than the appearance factor because, you know, I don't really care too much about the appearance of the characters. It's awesome, you know. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy that it's there, but as long as there are no moves in loot boxes, I can live with it. If they put moves in loot boxes, though, which is a concern of mine, I will be furious. And you know what I'll do about it? I'll sit on my computer and do nothing about it. And I'll still buy the game for $60, but let's just hope that that doesn't happen. Um, now, going back to the movesets and the variations that you're able to create, Ed Boon hinted that you could download community creations to basically choose what you want for your character. If somebody created a nasty competitive moveset for your favorite character, you can download that. And that's something that's very interesting. I'm not sure how that will play out in competitive scene or if it will ruin the idea of, you know, making your own. But I'm going to think optimistically and I'm going to look at that as like that's to me that's an awesome new installment to the franchise. It's an awesome new innovation allowing people to download essentially new characters, new attires, new movesets. That's all good. You know, that's that's I love customization. I love downloading people's creations. That's really cool to me, and I'm really glad that it's in the game. Now, on to some little things that I noticed, uh, especially involving characters. If you didn't see on the live stream, Cabal has basically been confirmed. They announced him essentially when uh, they were announcing the combat cast on January 30th. So check in for that. Um, Cabal popped up on screen. If you missed it, I slowed it down, uh, and it's clear to see that it's Cabal. And yeah, that, that's basically a Cabal is going to be in this game. That's awesome. Lots of returning characters. Speaking of returning characters, I'm going to lay on a fat I told you so because as I said in my previous video about characters I want to see in Mortal Kombat 11, death in Mortal Kombat means nothing. If you're dead and the fans love you, Ed Boon's going to find some way to make you come back. And that's essentially what's going to happen with Mortal Kombat 11. I love this new idea of time travel and the fact that there's been some, you know, some deity watching over since the original Mortal Kombat game, Mortal Kombat 1 in the 90s. Having that be carried over to now, that leaves so much potential for returning characters and characters that we haven't seen in this new era yet. And I'm very excited for that. That's probably the thing I'm most excited about. The trailer showed Liu Kang and Kung Lao. Kung Lao, I'm not sure if he'll be playable or if, if he will be an NPC, but... If he's an NPC, that's cool. If he's playable, that's awesome. Either way, my big thing that I see about that, though, is the attires and how they look. They look like either their Mortal Kombat 9 or their Shaolin Monks attires. Could this be giving credence to the original leak that came out about a Shaolin Monks type game mode? I do not believe so. I still think that is complete bullshit. I will love it if it's true, but I don't really believe that leak. That's still something, though. That, you know, that's something to keep your eye on, and it's something that I found interesting. 
Uh, I like the idea, like I said, of being able to bring characters back. I predict that there's going to be, you know, lots of fan favorite characters in this game, as shown by the introduction of Scarlet. Now, Scarlet, this is her first appearance since Mortal Kombat 9 and her first built-in game experience. I'm not sure how she's going to really correlate with the story, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. The one thing about Scarlet that I'm not a big fan of is her attire. I, I really prefer the old one, maybe if you just made it a little bit less, uh, you know, boobs. If you just maybe tone that down a little bit, it's... I, I like... I think her original attire is really cool. I like how, yeah, you know, the red hair and the, uh, the ninja mask. I think that's a cool thing she's got going on. I couldn't even really recognize Scarlet at first uh, as her new character. Either way, you know, it's hype. It's Scarlet. I love it either way. It's just that's a little thing that I noticed that I wasn't a big fan of, but I'm nitpicking. Essentially, I'm very happy Scarlet's in this game. And with the ability to create your own attires, hopefully it's not loot box related... That shouldn't be an issue, because I'm sure I can just plaster on the old attire. Uh, and that'll be awesome, because Scarlet's a really cool character. I'm excited to play as her. And another character I'm really excited about is Jairus. I feel like, yeah, that's his name, right? Jairus? Yeah. All right. Jairus, uh, he's a really cool character. I am I I think there's something to him, though. I think there is way more to Jairus than what's being shown. Uh, the way he's being portrayed right now appears to be kind of a lackey or a you know subordinate of the big, you know, the lady who I forget the name of, who's controlling everything. He seems to be related to her, because they can both control time, and he seems to be somebody below her, because he's immediately a playable character, and doesn't seem to have that divine power if he's on the same level as everybody else. Um, but something about him. I don't think he is just that. I think there's some secret to his character, and I feel like maybe we've seen this character before, and I feel like his name is kind of an anagram for something. Jairus just seems like a weird name. The one anagram I could think of would be Sarge, and I don't know what that could be. I, d I don't know who Sarge could be. I have a few ideas, but I'm not really going to say them yet just in case I am completely wrong. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting name. It's an interesting character. I'm really excited to see how he's going to play. He seems like a fun time to play as. So I'm really excited to play as him. Um, also another just base thing that I noticed, Raiden is evil, we've kind of known this, uh, the attire. Even though they didn't explicitly say that he's evil, it would be much more likely that he's evil than he's good. And it's very likely that we are going to see Shao Kahn in the story mode, given the timeline shift that we're probably going to see. Uh, and that means we're going to get original Raiden back, and that's and he's going to bring balance to the realms or whatever. That's going to be cool, and it gives a reason for Shao Kahn to be DLC. I think he should come with the game, given that they've announced him prior to the game's release. But that's just me. What can you do? You know, they're making money, I guess. Um, that's that's essentially it. I'm going to be making a lot of new videos in the future about what I'd like to see now that there's, you know, a branching point. The only reason why I didn't make videos immediately after the announcement trailer is because by the time I was ready to make a video for it, it everybody had made a video about it, and... It, there's really nothing to say because it was just a teaser and with the big gameplay reveal live stream coming out I feel like it would have been better for me to wait and I'm glad that I did because I had a lot of predictions that were immediately wrong such as create a character returning well that was, I mean it was kind of right but you know I was expecting like Armageddon style create a character but anyways even though this isn't my normal type of video and I might have got a bit rambly I really hope you enjoyed um, and expect a lot of new stuff from me in the future. If you like this type of video where I'm just talking to the mic and speaking my opinions and, you know, you enjoy this type of stuff, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more of these. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below what you want to see in the future, and subscribe for more awesome Mortal Kombat content. Expect a lot of new things from me. I got a lot of stuff planned to be coming out, a bunch of scripts written, a bunch of cool shit that you guys are going to love. Now, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. My name is Tyler, and I am out. Yeah, so roll one on some chill shit. I was deep asleep on my Kill Bill shit. But now I'm back for it all, trying to steal shit. You should know my fans are the ones I keep it real with. Word, that's the reason I'm still afloat.